what exactly do we use AI for with regard to moving the insurance industry forward, specifically when it comes to things like health? Yeah, thanks for having me on, Dom. I, uh, I really appreciate the question. Um, so what we do um, and what I think others like us can do uh, is really decode and unmask um, and really present uh, what insurance companies um, at their base will cover and pay for, which shouldn't be as difficult to unpack as requiring AI to do it, but uh, it turns out it, uh, it is. So uh, this is about trying to uh, efficient, efficiently get folks into a process where they don't feel so intimidated or, or understand maybe the nuances within certain parts of this, this insurance industry because they can be daunting. What exactly can consumers or, or possible policyholders look to gain through anomaly technology? Sure. Um, so I, I would say certainty would be the biggest thing and really transparency. Um, there was an interesting survey done by uh, the American Hospital Association, and it pointed out one of the few things that all Americans agree on right now. About 83 percent of people um, agree that they want more transparency from their health insurance. Uh, it makes me wonder what the other 17 percent want. Um, but right now, the reality is no one really knows with any real detail before they get care what's covered. I mean, I do this for a living and I don't. Uh, my wife and I just had a uh, baby seven months old now, and we're still working through uh, various denials. And I, I literally am the CEO of a company um, that is designed to prevent this kind of stuff. So, you know, really transparency and certainty so that we can know these things up front rather than having to deal with it after we've already gotten care that we don't know what it costs. And then finding out, by the way, that it's not covered and then you got to work backwards uh, through that process. Uh, we can use technology now to make that much better on the front end. So patients have a better idea, and then policymakers um, can continue to push uh, on their end to require uh, transparency, which well, I think is, let uh, me is a step in the right Let direction. me just say, by the way, congratulations, first of all, on the birth of your child, you <laughs> and your wife on that. Uh, thank you for bearing the thank lead you. there for us. Congratulations on that part. So <laughs> let's, talk, let's talk a little bit about this, though. How exactly do your systems then operate? We've talked about things like large language models and, and, and mm -hmm. you know, machine learning what exactly do your sure. systems and technology parse through? What is it that's teaching, so to speak, these systems to tell potential users what exactly is going to be possibly at a higher odds of being denied or paid or anything else? Yeah, great question. Um, we really lean on the health bills themselves. So the claims that go out from the provider um, and then what's called uh, the remits. So what insurers have to send back in a reply, either, yes, we paid this or no, we denied it. And the reason we train on that data is right now, when you think about your doctor um, and then your insurance company, whoever it is, they'll have contracts that are largely free text and have all kinds of disclaimers like, you know, we'll pay the lesser of, um, you know, when mixed in with real kind of hard-coded numbers. And then there's policies that dictate the things they'll actually pay for. Sometimes they follow them, sometimes they don't. Um, and that gray space is where we wind up with a ton of uncertainty uh, and denials, and that's really why we lean on the bills that go out and the data that comes back. So we know that regardless of what that paper says, the policies and the contracts, we're also taking what they're actually doing so we can match up the gaps. And that's really the intelligence that you know, we're at least starting with to bring back to the doctors so they know um, and can tell a patient in advance what'll be covered and what won't.